good. Let's go do a check. So we need to start at the front. And this is where the front forward cockpit, the forward cockpit door is very good. Because just check what I need to do if I don't use that. And it is, it is even though the sea state looks calm, it's not. But yeah, so. But it is, a, ooh, a nice big wide passage. So, uh, uh, we're going to start here in front. And this is why I need the Allen key. So the Allen key is needed to check this one little piece of shackle that we've heard from the other groups, other people, our 45 owners, that they just went flying. So I need to check this. The head sail is fastened with a D shackle. But it's it's not an it's not a normal D shackle. So it's a D shackle that uses an Allen key. And for that we need this. Okay. That one is done. Normally with the code D. If we do the code D, then I check while I do the attachments of the code D, but it will not hurt to do it now. So I'm checking for the fastness there. And I'm also looking for the bob stays where they are attached at the hole. I can see it through here, but I'll show you. I'm looking at the safety pins over here. That safety pin is good. That one is in. So you just normally need to look at the, the safety rings are in. If the safety rings are in, then you know <laughs> they are still there. I need to go to the other side and it's normally tricky, even if it's a catamaran. The weather have not subsided that much yet. So I look at the other side and the rings are there. This one, I'm inspecting the mast on both sides. And I'm looking for things that is not there, that was there. <laughs> and if it is calm weather, you might see spare parts lying on the roof or maybe even on the floor. So you have to check out for that. While you added also the flying fish. But like a, a night like last night, there's no way that any broken stuff that is falling on the deck will stay on the deck. So I'm going through this. Just in general, I'm looking at all the bow Bowling knots, whether the bowling knot is good. Before I get on, I'm also going to check the safety pins of the shrouds. And they normally come loose. So I'm looking at this one here. And it's tightened. Then also look at the, the main sail fastener. I put now new D shackles in, so they will not come undone very easily, but then sometimes previous ones they did come undone. All the safety pins is in. And on this side, I've put this pulley system in and I lost the reef line before 
because the pulley system, the main halyard was not pulling this one high enough. And because it was not pulling high enough, this one was hitting here. And it actually broke the line, the reef line. So just check all the cars. Okay, all the battens are there. All the D shackles are good. The safety pins are in. And the screws that need to be screwing is screwing. Then very important to watch for and we, are, we lost a boom, almost we lost a boom um, while we're doing our Yachtmaster is this pin over here. So make sure that is good, the Jesus bolt is good and all of these bolts are good. Okay, if they are good Now we need to go to the back and check those out. I can actually see it from here, but let me go and show you. I installed this one, but before I had to watch this. So where the, the sheet lines is coming through, they were actually chafing my electrical wires there. Now I installed this nice stainless steel part and don't need to worry about that chafing anymore. But while I'm down here, Make sure that all your lines are neatly hooked up. The blocks are cleared. You see that block? So the line is already inside there. So we have to make sure the lines don't get in. So this one I need to tighten up a little bit. Okay. So nothing is going to come into the blocks here. So that is good. Okay. Let's go to the back. <laughs> Very interesting. It's not that stable yet the back, so you have to hold on. But this one's here, they also come undone. So both of them, they're looking good. Not too bad. But look, my sailback lines is undone and I can come into the blocks. So this can get into the blocks over there. So I need to tighten them. So hold on, I cannot hold the camera and do that. Okay, so I tie them up. And I also check that the other lines are tied and they are good. Look at the sail if there's any damage, any buttons that's coming out. And I don't see any buttons about to fall out. I do see our South African flag is <laughs> just a little bit wrapped up. Okay, I think this is it for a year. Now I need to get down. So see you downstairs. I need normally this has been checked while we stand there. But is the all the knots? Check if the bow lint knot is still good. And they are good. The main alert is not showing any signs of chafing. Our code D line showed signs of chafing. So you have to check that. Okay, now let's move backwards. And this is also tricky. So I'm going to switch you off again. If I use the front cockpit door, it's not so tricky. Go through all your lines, especially where they are at the blocks. But remember, these lines are moving and the stress points is not necessarily there. So look through the lines and make sure there's no chafing. And normally if the lines are at the stress points, check here. This is where our chafing happened. So 
weather coming out of the mast make sure it doesn't have any chafing points and you have to check this on a regular whether you're sailing reef different reef lines especially the these ones you must check them when they fully fully hard cleated on or cleated hard on so as I move backwards, I check the lifelines, also again just the o-ring, uh, the safety rings. Okay, safety rings are all there, so the lifelines is lifing. And then, I need to check Tupix. So, two things that I check here. Is the engine still secure? Otherwise, it's just flipping around. Ah. So, these lines, which is securing Tupix not to move outwards, I can secure, I can tighten it. There's a few reasons why this one is getting loosened. First, of course, uh, those cleat, cleat, they not, they do need to be retightened every now and then. But also, Tepix, during the night or during cool, cooler times, the air, it seems like it's deflating, but the air is just getting colder, so it's, it's getting more dense and then it looks like the pix is deflating but when it's deflating then the pontoons that is pressing here is now flattened uh, soft so because it's now soft the lines are also going softer so you have a choice you can tighten it in now and hopefully when the sun is out it will not make the damage somewhere because the air will expand again and makes Tepex go harder again. It's a catch-22. I also checked all the D-shackles on which Tepex is hanging. So that all looks good. And then I go to the front. I also check that our scuba tanks while I'm here is tightened. Okay, that looks good. Just need to look inside. Yeah. They are good. And then also whether the life raft is still okay. Okay, all of that is done. Then Tepix has a cover and the cover has lines at the bottom that tighten the covers. So if we should use the engines at one time and those lines are loose, it might get into the prop. So let's check those. They all look good to me. And the line, Tepix line there is still good. 
the ladder. The ladder looks secure. And this is for the outside. Now we need to go also do an engine check if you use the engines. Um, we rarely use the engines, but every now and then you need to start the engines if, if you have a failed attack or um, if there's no wind. So you always need to make sure the engines are good and in a working condition and that the bulges is clean and so on. But I will do the engine check, a uh, separate video on that. But I do do engine checks while we're on a passage as well. Um, and, and it actually helped me one night because I was doing the engine checks the next morning and found that this specific engine was full of our fresh water. Mm. So imagine, if, okay, it was not, the engine was not drowned. Uh, there was just a lot of water in it, so no damage would have been done. Um, but there was a lot of water in it. So you have to at least drain it. Okay. Now we decided to make part of the provisioning a whole Iberian ham, all to ourselves, because we are hooked on this thing. It is absolutely amazing. So one of our friends that we made in one of the restaurants, he arranged everything for us, so we bought one. Okay, and this one's all nice and dry and clean. What's that green thing lying there at the bottom? Okay, and then also what we do very often, and we actually take note of it, Ooh, is our electricity, And as you can see, we're pretty good. I mean, the turbines is not even running, so I know it's above 90%. But last night was, <laughs> it was very windy. So the turbines, they work. Um, and then all the switches are on, it needs to be on. Bulge pumps are working. You can always test them. But they're working. And then make sure your channel, radio channels on channel 16. Okay, that's it. That's it folks. Give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It will help us. I don't know what it will help us, but it will help us. So just subscribe. And, and if you want to leave a comment, nasty or not nasty, please do it down below and we will see what we can do. We decided to include a quick bonus because there's not much else where we can fit in the, the this, this, this is going to be very short. It fits in kind of like what we do, what checks do we do on passage, but this is now specifically on night, night watch. watch. Yeah, and what we normally start our night watch um, during the day, it doesn't matter, we take turns, we're up at the helm and in front of the instruments the whole time, but at night time, um, we decided on the hour but just after the first hour after sunset that is when the night watches officially start yeah, so and we can we have then a dinner together a last dinner and have a nice sunset cocktail or yes. coffee or whatever the, the case might be and then we start that is the most beautiful part that of the is day. the most beautiful part of the day and it doesn't yes. have some places nine o'clock the sun is still up yeah. um, at night and then no, it doesn't work quite well. Or 11 o'clock one place. Eh? It was, we started our Very watches late, at yeah. 11 o'clock because the sun set half past 10. Yeah, so, if you, you can't sleep before the time. Yeah, it is, it is, watch, yeah it's anyway sleep. not yeah, nice. So. Yeah, yeah. And then the last person that was the last one before the sun comes up, um, if that person went to bed before the sun come up, that person can then sleep in for as long as, as long as they, as until they, they, wake, until up. they yeah. wake up yeah. so that is actually a good refreshing yeah um, so every second night you have an early night and every second morning you get to sleep in yeah that kind of thing yeah, yeah. so yeah. tonight will be Pietro and tomorrow night it will be me that will start the shift the, the early shift yeah so yeah. what do we do on shifts oh, one of the first things is watch for other boats and collision, possible collision causes. Yes, that is actually quite important. 
Um, yeah, so there is call rakes and all of those things, but yeah, you know, we can scan and at this height, and this is a nice thing about Sisu, we are very high. We are the, my height is like 3.8 meters above sea level. So we can see around 12 nautical miles if there's no Sahara dust in the air and stuff yeah. like that. So we can see quite far if the lights of the other boats. Yeah, so that's comforting. And then also um, we've got on the, on the navigation very good indicators where a boat will hit us and how far we'll go past it, like, like we'll hit the close, uh, uh, closest point of approach yeah, and CPI. time, yeah. closest point of approach, time to TCPA. Yeah. So we have that, so we check for boats. Yeah, and if, if, the, if you see the boat doesn't react and the, the, the time frame is getting smaller, we just call them on the radio. Yes, yeah, yeah. They say eight cables, so it's point 0.8 of a nautical mile that you're not supposed to cross closer than that um, at night. Actually during day as well, but yeah, anytime. especially at night. Okay, and then from the other side that I always ask is um, we need to look at the barometric pressure. So we've got the barometric pressure set here. It is, it is the, this is our windex over there. So we can see the wind and everything very nicely. And then when we press the up arrow, we can see the air temperature and then we can see the pressure and the statistics. And then again, back to our normal windex. The pressure and the reason why we look at the pressure system if it drops more than six millibars in an hour or in, a, in three hours then we know there's a lot of wind on its way and uh, trade winds not that much um, there's no not not big big problems there but yeah if it drops more than six millibars in last six hours uh, three hours we know there's there's a lot of wind coming. i think it's something like four six or something like that so it's a lot and if it drops more so we check the barometric um, pressure to make sure and our watches is three hours long so we we need to check that to say so the next thing to watch as well is obviously the direction of the wind um is it gonna if it changes is it gonna influence our course um course over ground or should we adjust sails or what should we do should we tack or jibe or uh, so at one point we actually had a, had a nice rhythm during the day. I think it was also the Sahara that was doing that. But during the day, it, the wind, it, and it was basically trade winds, but the wind shifted about 5 degrees, which allows us to tack to the other direction. And during the night it shifted back the other time, so we could tack this way. So our course, we didn't tack really 90 degrees. So it will go like this, and then we tack. And then it will go like that, and then we tack again. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we look at, and that will, that's why we look at true wind direction to actually making sure as well whether we can tack or not, if that pattern occurs, yeah, yeah. and then it happened quite often that we could tack when the wind changed just 5 degrees. But of course here in the Mediterranean it is, it's very different. Yeah, and between <laughs> islands as well as from this yeah, side, yeah, this side, side you, you have to be side, quite it's... awake for that. Yeah, it's, it's, you're tired after your shift. <laughs> yeah, I'm very tired. <laughs> uh, sometimes you tack quite a lot, and I don't think even the piece of person downstairs can sleep because the wind <laughs> is going all the time. <laughs> <laughs> going. Yeah, so, yeah, so it so is wind basically direction. wind direction and then the sail settings. That is the two other ones. And then for fishing boats and FADs. That is a little bit more difficult. We have our radar on and we set the radar if we're in close quarters of other boats, very close, like, like uh, coastal, uh, coastal waters. Then we put the radar like three miles because then the resolution for the radar is at its best and we can pick up little small fishing, bully, fishing boats. boats. And sometimes if I these, if they mark quite well, but yeah. some of them are, some of them are. <laughs> they, they are. Some of them have lights on. Some of them is nothing. And then the, the fish farms in Turkey is quite well they on the radar. Well they not, they not lit, but they on the radar. Some of them are lit. Yeah, but yeah, that's the problem. Some of them are, and some of but them some are of not. Them not so you yeah, cannot yeah. rely on. But something. they are, oh, yeah, they are definitely on the charts. You, you can see them on the radar. They, yeah, they marked on the charts, but they not always where they are marked. And above, over and above the wind direction, the wind speed as well. Mm, yes. I mean, should we be reefing or <laughs> should Are you we always concerned put the KD so out or what should we that's do? That's it, yeah. So we need to watch the wind speed, I think. 
And with the wind speed is also sea state. So if the sea state is getting worse, then also that will affect our sails and our sailing abilities. But it will also start to tell us something is on the way because you, or maybe there's a there's a, a, a acceleration zone on its way or just a confused sea state on its yeah. way. But it's normally a warning. Yeah. Yes. Just to be awake. Yeah, so on the long passages we have um, Iridium Go and um, predict wind. So we download every six hours. We download the wind just before the night shift starts and also the morning before um, that basically daybreak. Then we download it again to see whether there's any imminent weather big changes like a storm or something that's going to happen or uh, we, we just have a general lookout for the, the weather files and we download we first download two models um, in the beginning we downloaded all four but <laughs> it, it takes a long time so we download the two and if they are very different then we'll download the other two yeah. models so during the we're making a cup of tea yeah, then we exchange notes. I'll be on my watch. I saw a ship approaching that might be that we might be in danger of eating. I'll just tell them there is a ship approaching, or there was one passing, but it's fine now. Or <laughs> there might be a sort of I think I saw something on the radar, so just keep an eye out for that. Um, mm. Especially yes. changes if there's something changing, changes. like for instance, um, these ferries they, they have a route, and if they get to a certain point, they start changing. So those are things that we need to note. Or uh, other sailboat that's stacking, then mm -hmm. we can see, okay, it's changing, changing, changing. So keep an eye out for any wild cards. That's it. See you next time.